So is there a difference between a self-defense tool and a weapon? So I posted on Instagram a couple days ago asking you guys if you think that there is a difference, if there isn't a difference, and what your top three uh, items of choice would be if you had to use them to defend yourself. So first let's start with uh, what I believe to be the difference between a self-defense tool and a weapon. And what it comes down to is the context in which you are using the item. So that being said, it is possible for a self-defense tool to become a weapon and for a weapon to become a self-defense tool. So what distinguishes the two? So this is my opinion, and if you, if you agree with me, that's great. If you don't, um, feel free to share your reasoning as to why you disagree. So in my mind, a weapon has one purpose, and that is to cause bodily harm um, to another living creature. Okay, so your intention is to cause pain, discomfort, to hurt and or kill the person or creature or whatever it is that you're defending against, I guess. Um, a self-defense tool has a different function. Now, while it can still be used to elicit damage, pain, injury, death, whatever it is, I believe the primary function of a self-defense tool is to create an opportunity for escape. So if you don't really see the difference between the two, uh, let's use uh, an example. So a lot of times when you ask people what their you know, number one choice of weapon would be or you know, tool of self-defense, uh, a lot of people will say that they prefer to use or would pick a gun. Now, a gun can fall under the category of either a self-defense tool or a weapon, depending on the circumstance. So let's say, for example, um, I'm being attacked and a person is coming towards me and I pull out whatever gun that I happen to be using and the, you know, the attacker sees it and it's used as a deterrent for them to back off or they see it, they get scared, they leave or it creates a distraction long enough for me to manage to get away. That is using a gun as a self-defense tool. Now, if they continue to advance on me and I decide now I'm going to discharge the weapon, uh, my intention has now changed. I am now trying to hurt this person. And even if it is justified, you are now using the gun as a weapon, not as a deterrent. So now I'm going to go over my top three choices for a self-defense tool. Um, so first one is one of these. So it's like a little alarm thingy. Um, usually they come you know, a little keychain, and uh, these are great. They're small enough. Uh, they don't change anything about your routine, um, and usually there's two ways to, to activate these. Now, the good thing about this is it also has like a little bit of a light, so if you're trying to like find your keys or you're trying to look for something, um, that's usually pretty handy there too. Um, the other thing is some of these are chargeable. Some of them are not. They run on batteries. This one is rechargeable. It uses like a little USB port thingy over here. So um, there's two ways uh, usually to um, get these to go off. So what it is, it's a, it's a sound deterrent. So it's meant to either startle the person that's in front of you or get the attention of other people that are around you. Um, like a key eye, but now you can use a device instead. So there's a little button over here, and usually if you hold it down, it will discharge the sound. Um, the second way is if you pull off the, uh, the cord this way, the pen that's right over here, um, it will also cause the thing to, to go off. And it's pretty loud. Um, so yeah, basically, I don't know how well the cameras and the microphone on my computer is going to show it, but basically... Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty loud. So um, this is definitely on the list of uh, top three things because you can fit it on your keys, you can put it on your bag, um, you can basically put it anywhere, and it's pretty inconspicuous. It, you know, it doesn't look like anything much, but uh, again, should you ever have to use it, it can come in pretty handy. So that's one of them. Keep in mind too that just because you push the button and scare the crap out of the person uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stop what they're doing right away. Uh, they might, and if they do, that's great. If not, uh, keep in mind that this can also be used as a tactic or a distraction for you to get your uh, striking or your grappling skills to work while you uh, control the person so that you can get away. So just uh, keep that in mind uh, that it's not 100% foolproof. So number two on my list is actually a flashlight. Um, and the more you think about it, the more it starts to make sense. It seems a little abstract at first. Uh, the reason I pick a flashlight is because one, it can be used as a weapon for sure. Like again, they have these like little teeth thingy on some of them that you can use to like bash someone's face. Um, the other thing though is that light provides you with information, especially when it's dark. 
Um, let's say you're you know, going to your car, you're trying to get into your house, you think someone's following you, and you're not really sure, but it's too dark to tell. Um, a flashlight can give you the information that you need to help you make a better decision, whether you need to engage with the person, disengage, if you need to run, um, if you need to call for help, or whatever it may be. Now, some of these lights that have like the little teeth on them, they actually have um, different brightness settings, and those come in very handy as well because now you can use the light also as a deterrent. Um, so again, you have like a regular. Now this doesn't look good in here because it's light. I'm gonna do this in the dark. Hold on. Okay, so it's finally nighttime. Uh, we're outside, so there's a little bit of uh, ambient light from the street lights. Uh, there's a soccer game going on in the field out over there, but there's uh, there's no one else around here right now, and it's pretty dark uh, just to kind of look around, especially on camera. Okay, so if I go with the brightest mode, which is here, again, that's a lot of light, and it is spread out. If we were going to use this in a self-defense situation to deter a person or disorient them, uh, this light actually has a thing where you can extend the light and it concentrates the light into a smaller uh, area. So again, imagine shooting that you know, on someone. That's a lot of light over here. Just to kind of give you an example, um, it goes pretty far. Uh, camera's not really doing it justice, but when I shine this forward, um, I can see a lot of details in that tree in front of me. So we talked about uh, using a flashlight to help give us uh, information. So we're back inside now, and I'm using the uh, the lowest setting right now. So again, if I came into the dojo and I need to take a look around, this is again more than enough light for me to see and navigate what's going on. Now my walls are a very, very light color, so if I shine the light on a lighter color, you can see that it bounces back into the camera, and that can be disorienting for me, and that's a lot of light. So just to kind of give an idea, if you shine that, oh my god, that's really, really bright. Okay, so using that as a deterrent uh, to blind somebody so they can't see where you are for you to escape or to set up whatever strikes you're going to do, um, that's definitely an option with a flashlight like this. And last but not least is a good pair of running shoes. Again, when we look at the difference between self-defense and a fight, the function of self-defense, our goal, our objective, is to disengage and to escape. Um, so again, any problem that you can walk away from, uh, even if it means that you got to swallow your pride, even if it means that you have to give the person what they want before you leave, uh, number one goal is to get home safely. So um, I believe that a good pair of shoes to help you walk away comfortably um, is, is one of the best things that you can have should you need to run. Um, again, if they're good running shoes, they'll, they'll help you out with that as well. Okay, so those are my three um, self-defense tools of choice. If you thought of something different or if you've changed your mind, again, leave a comment. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this and let me know what you think about the difference between a weapon and a self-defense tool. Do you still think they're the same? Do you agree that they're different? Do you think my definitions are correct or not? Uh, let's get a little bit of a discussion going. Now keep in mind, um, a tool is something that you have to know how to use. So if I'm going to say that I'm going to use a flashlight as my you know, tool of self-defense or I'm going to use an alarm system as my tool of self-defense, it's not something that I can just say, okay, I'm going to put this on my keys and forget about it. You need to know how to use it. You need to know all the different circumstances in which you might have to use it. And you have to know the capabilities and the restrictions on the tool that you're using. So what I would recommend is if you have any of these uh, items that you would use for self-defense, practice with them. Them. Okay, practice, you know, whatever striking you know how to do, whatever grappling you know how to do, and see how it changes your technique and what it can add to your skill set as a martial artist or a self-defense practitioner.